Folks, it's round two at the Aquarium Plant Bar, and now that I'm sure you've shaken the hangover from the first video, we're going to continue our series on aquarium fertilization and dosing for beginners. In the first video of this series, we talked about why we dose in the first place, macronutrients, and we talked about a term you're going to hear a lot about in dosing methods, NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. The Beginning Guide to Aquarium Fertilization and Dosing, Part 2, or the Second Dose, coming up. Now in this video, I'm going to also reference, as I did in the first of the series, the Seachem product line. It's not necessarily the most potent out there, but it is widely available and great for beginners with low-tech tanks and low-maintenance plants. In the first video of this series, we focused on macronutrients, NPK. And what I'm going to use in this video as an example is Flourish Trace and Flourish Excel for what we'll be discussing. Comprehensive fertilizers like Flourish we'll get to in the next video. And to solicit some help, just punch the clock. My hardest working baby Amano shrimp, Sebastian. What are the folks going to learn about today? Uh, micronutrients. That's right. What else? Cheat sheet on your left. Uh, non-mineral nutrients. That's it. Those are the two. So hey, we're. Can I get my raise now? No, I told you we'd talk about this. I got to get the video done. For wait, where, where where are you going? I need some help. To the labor board. You're going to the the labor board. Shrimp have a labor board. Shrimps have the best union. Well, you think you could stop at your station and just finish your shift here? Because I, I could use a little bit of help. Walking right past my station. I guess I have a uh, a mono shrimp on strike. Well, I'll have to do this on my own here. So let's get into micronutrients, which we'll use this bottle of Flores Trace to illustrate, and non-mineral nutrients. So your micronutrients are necessary for plant growth and obviously called micronutrients because your plants don't need a lot of them, but they do need them. Now your non-mineral nutrients, I'm gonna use this bottle of Excel to illustrate one and that's carbon. Your other two are hydrogen and oxygen. So let's talk a little bit about micronutrients and our bottle of Trace. Some of these micronutrients are boron, copper, and believe it or not, iron, even though it's absolutely essential for our plants, is still considered a micronutrient. Others, manganese, molybdenum, and zinc. I can't believe I said molybdenum right. I did practice that. So, elements like trace, bottles like trace, they just provide a more comprehensive blend of your micronutrients. So let's get into a couple of them. If we flip this around and zoom in, you'll see some of these micronutrients in this bottle of trace. Boron, manganese, I'll do it again. Molybdenum, two for two. So, some of these nutrients. Boron, essential for regulating other nutrients and it helps plants produce sugars, but you only need it in small amounts. Move it along to copper, helps plants reproduce and stimulate the production of proteins. Okay, DJ, I get it. Reproduce, stimulate. Got it. Let's keep moving. Let's keep moving. And iron. Now, this is absolutely essential. It's deficient in municipal water, but it has to be present for the manufacture of chlorophyll. Without it, plants will yellow and they'll fail to produce a dark green growth in them. Another is chloride. This is essential for plant metabolism. It could be deficient in well water or deionized water. Again, these are all nutrients that plants need in a small amount. Manganese helps plants digest starches and nitrogen, which is one of the macronutrients, if you remember. Molyb molybdenum, my favorite word, assists in nitrogen metabolization. Again, nitrogen metabolization, another, another macronutrient. And we have zinc, which is essential for plant carbohydrate metabolization and it regulates plant growth. What you'll notice, though, is that a lot of these micronutrients aid in the absorption of macronutrients, so they all work together. Now our non-mineral nutrients, carbon, usually produced from CO2. All plants do require a source of carbon. Now if you aren't injecting CO2 into your tanks, you can use an organic carbon substitute such as Excel or API CO2 booster. Other non-mineral nutrients, hydrogen and oxygen. And most of these are extracted from the air in the water. So hopefully that helps. That's micro and non-mineral nutrients, folks. Next, we're gonna cover different dosing methods now that we're a little bit more familiar with the types of nutrients and what they do. Hey, Sebastian, I see you're still there, buddy. Cherry shrimp gave bad directions. Hey, you got a little bit lost there, did you? Well, ki ki yeah, those mollies are rude. Stay in your lane. Hey, buddy, you think you could kind of help me just one more time before you go to the labor union and take me out? All right, last time. Okay, one more time. Go to at D. Michael's Fish Dan on the Instagram. Just started posting there, folks. 
Hey, Sebastian, thanks, buddy. Still going on strike. Understood. Understood. Well, hopefully that's helpful, folks. As always, please like, comment, subscribe for future content, and thanks for watching.